questions. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this Lucia Steel and Composite uh, Deck Designer uh, webinar. This is in a series of webinars we're running from the Lucas headquarters here in the UK. I'm Stuart Morrison. I, I know many of you from my uh, activities here at Lucas. I am joined today by Julian and Paul. Uh, Julian, quick introduction. Hi, I'm Julian Moses. I'm going to be looking after the technical presentation today. Paul. Hello, I'm Paul Belchamber. I provide some general marketing and sales support. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, the idea of today is to introduce you to the Composite Deck Designer. It, um, it, it's a new feature for us. We, we've sort of uh, had this in our system or with our system now for a little while, but we're getting more and more uh, requests to add design to what we offer. I guess many of you as Lucas users know we're primarily an analysis program, but this is sort of a step towards offering more of a complete solution including design. So let's have a quick look at um, what's happening. Okay, um, this is going to be in sort of uh, three parts here. Uh, we're, the way this operates is that uh, there's a, a, a definition stage where you'll define your data, You'll then interact that with the LUSAS part of the modeling, which you're all familiar with, I trust. And then you'll get back and view the results and establish as your design up to what you wanted to do or not, in which case you'll go around the whole loop again. And there's a whole bunch of additional information in there, graphics, tables to help you along the way, and a lot of uh, detailed information backing up this fairly complex code. But hopefully this will guide you through it in a way which will make life a bit easier for you. Questions, always good to have questions. So we've got over uh, 200 people registered for the session. Uh, you would have noticed in your particular session in front of you, you're all muted. Uh, there's a reason for this is because it get quite confusing if everybody started jumping in. But feel free to use the panel on the right if you've got any questions to sort of fire them in. As we said, Paul Bellchamber will be monitoring these as we go. We'll try and answer some of the questions during the slotted time. We've got about 30 minutes here, so hopefully we'll get back to you as we roll. But also you can send them in via email, and we'll answer those as soon as we can along the way. So fire your questions in, very important as we go forward here. Right, as far as design goes, well, we do actually have some features already in Lusas. Uh, if you're a user, you may be using the vehicle load optimization. This, this is where we actually can create live load patterns for you. We support a whole range of different codes. This continually being enhanced. This used to be called autoloader, but we've now enhanced it greatly, and we've added some codes here, in, and we continue to add to these. So if you're sitting in a part of the world and we're not supporting your codes, we're interested to understand which codes you're using and how we should improve those. We also cover uh, creep and uh, concrete creep and shrinkage to various design codes around the world, as we do pre and post tensioning the world. Again, various codes information is embedded into this functionality. We have had in Loose House for quite a long time now an RC slab design capability, and in recent versions we've enhanced that. We've added codes such as the Indian codes, the uh, Ashto codes, and we continually enhance this as we go forward. So you'll find a lot of information already in loose has to do some design capability. But today, we're going to focus on the steel and composite deck designer to the Euro code. This particular option is an add-on to what you may already have, such as Lusas Bridge or Lusas Bridge Plus license. And it performs comprehensive design checks. And it will then go forward and do automatic calculations for various sections, whether it be a steel or steel composite bridge deck. And a lot of this is quite type of work is quite time consuming if you're doing it by hand using a spreadsheet, but hopefully this will uh, make it less error, error prone and make life easier for you. And along the way, you'll be able to review and refine the data on the screen, and then at the end of the day, the reports will come out uh, with the detailed designs that you're interested in. So the particular applications we have uh, are shown here. You'll be able to work on a composite bridge, whether or not that has a concrete deck or a steel deck. And you can also have various different types of section, whether it's an eye or a box, a through girder or steel only. And there's a quite a number of different sort of sections you can use here. So how does this work? Well, the way we're going to operate it is a bit like the way this, this, these slides are going to I'm going to talk for a little bit, then Julian's going to show it to you. Basically, it works in three sections. Uh, section number one, you'll define in the composite designer the material model, the, the spans and the cross-section information. 
then that will be passed across to LUSAS where you'll complete the LUSAS model, solve the analysis, do various checks inside LUSAS itself, and that in itself will then export back to the composite designer. And that's where you will view the detailed design checks, obtain automated ULS and SLS and fatigue checks, on-screen graphics will help you along the way and understand is this a good design or not. And at that point, you'll make a, de a decision, is it ad adequate, is it optimized? If, uh, if no, go around again, modify the results and the information you have in front of you, and if it is uh, adequate, just go forward, print the results out, pass it on to your assessors, whoever you want to do your result, and that will then go forward as a completed design. So the first part of this process is we're going to show you a continuous uh, two-span bridge. It's going to have a concrete deck. It's got an eye girder type construction. And we are going to introduce you to the composite designer through a series of um, dialogues. First one will define the concrete and steel properties. Julian will be firing this up and show you how you enter this data. You will then go forward and define sub-dialogues. And here you will assist you with fatigue and damage calculations. Along the way, you will see there is a lot of help. Here we're displaying parts of the code, the formulas are there, and information will be given back to you. So it will guide you and help you and shape you and modify you as you go forward. Hopefully it will not be too painful going through the process, but there's a lot of information going forward. This is not a black box type approach. We are guiding you, you are showing you what we're doing, and then hopefully you should be able to follow the whole process from start to finish and certify your results as being correct. Then the second set of dialogues will be defining the materials. Here you define the concrete and or steel properties. There will be sub-dialogues which assist with fatigue. And again, interactive help will guide you along the way. Section information will be put in. Uh, you define the section properties. Uh, you will be able to calculate slab widths according to the code. Shear lag will come in, etc., etc. And you'll be able to um, look at plate shear lag, plate buckling effects as well as part of this first section in the design calculations. We can also look at stiffness. We can have sloping webs for box girders. The, uh, the stiffness can go particularly anywhere. And then we can do the various calculations, which would include things like temperature differentials according to the code, shrinkage calculations according to the code. And a lot of this information will come out to you. Having done all the data prep, this is where we will then hand it across to LUSAS and we'll show you how this happens now. We're going to look at the section property definitions and the materials required and then we'll export that to LUSAS. And at that point, I'm going to hand over to Julian to uh, take one forward. Oh, also, we'll also look at differential loading to various codes and shrinkage loading. Okay, I'm now handing this presentation over to Julian to uh, pick up on this. Okay, what we're going to look at today is one of the new examples that have been added to LUSAS. Now, there's two examples covering the composite designer. Now, these examples aren't part of the LUSAS examples manual, but they're included with the documentation that goes with the composite designer. So, there's two new separate examples that run through so you can understand how the um, composite designer works. Now, if I just have a look at this example, it's the two-span bridge that Stuart was talking about. Now, if I just page down through this example, we've got an example here that's very detailed. It goes through the whole process of working the section properties, working with LUSAS. Now, if I was to just work through this example, it's going to take much more than half an hour to do. So what I'm going to do in these three technical sessions that we're looking at today is just show you the key features of how you interact with the composite designer and LUSAS. So let's start with the composite designer. This is the empty composite designer, and the first thing you would do when you start it is go to File, New. And when you do this, you get a series of blank dialogues, and there they are tiered down the screen. Now, for the moment, I'm really only interested in the materials and the geometry dialogue, because in this first stage, what I'm going to do is set up the material data and the geometry section data. Now, these dialogues are quite large. They've got lots of text inputs. And because of that, they can look quite complicated, but they really aren't. It's just a process of working through the materials and the geometry. Now, 
with all the um, dialogues that you see, if I go to the help system, there is a detailed help on each of the dialogues, and that also includes a lot of the um, clause references and also the default values that we would recommend. So although the blank dialogues look quite detailed, if you work with the help and the example, it will guide you through the process of setting this data up. Now if I look at the blank dialogue here, anything where there's a question mark, if I click on the question mark, it gives me information to choose from. So here I can choose my structural grades of concrete. Down here I can choose some of the partial load factors in these dedicated sub-dialogues. Down here in the fatigue side, if I click down here, again, a dedicated sub-dialogue that allows me to choose by using the clause coded, uh, code clauses what type of factors I need to use. Now, I'm not going to type in the numbers to this. What I'm going to do is just close this down and I'm going to load up a pre-filled set of dialogues, which is this set of dialogues here. So in this one, you can see that I've already typed, typed in my concrete strength there. I've set up my Young's modulus of my steel. I've chosen my structural steel grade here. Down here, I've set up my fatigue detail. So basically, I've set up my concrete and my steel properties that I'm going to use in the model. If I go to the geometry tab, I've also set up some geometry sections. Now, if I go back to my example, now, on a girder elevation such as this, you're going to have a number of different geometric sections. So you're going to have sort of smaller flanges in this area and the span than you probably would have over the pier section. So you're going to have a number of geometric sections to set up. Now, depending on how complicated your, your bridge is, you might have five, you might have ten. In this simple example we're looking at today, we've got just three. We've got span girder A, span girder B, and a pier girder section. And each of these sections have different flange thicknesses. They could have different web thicknesses. So at the moment, we're looking at span girder A. Over here, you can see I've got a 500 mil top flange, which is 40 mil thick. We've got a web depth there of 1,100. We've got a 10 mil thickness on that web. Flange, bottom flange, 500 and thickness there. If I were to go to the pier girder, you'll see that this data updates and it now reflects the pier girder that I'm looking at. And here you can see that we've got a 600 mil wide bottom flange and that's 60 mil thick. So that's setting up the steel sections. Over here we're setting up details on the concrete slab. Over here we're setting up details on the width of the concrete slab. Now with this, if I click here, rather than just looking at the um, slab width, if I right hand mouse button here, I can use the shear lag calculator here to allow me to look at the dedicated sub dialog for the shear effects. So you're entering the actual sections, but the composite designer will allow you to calculate the shear lag effects for the geometric sections that we're going to use later on in the analysis model. Now, once you've entered all this data for your materials and your geometric sections, you can export this data into LUSAS. So if I go to File Export here, there's a function that will allow you to export the data, the materials, the geometric sections in a format that I can load into LUSAS so I can build my analysis model. And that's going to be the next section that we look at in terms of the technical presentation. So if I just hand back to Stuart, we'll see if we've got some questions. Okay, well... Thank you, uh, Julian, for running through that. I, you were seeing there some of the key features were the automation of the active width, the dedicated sub-dialogues, and the exporting of the data back across to LUSAS. Uh, yes, we've had a few questions come in. Uh, Paul's now sort of going to run through one or two of those for us. Thank you, Paul. Uh, your one question, um, uh, is there a limit to the number of sections that can be defined in the, in the deck designer? 
No, you can define as many sections as you want. As I said, in that simple example I'm looking at, it has just three sections, but you could, on a more complicated structure, have 20 or 30 sections, and those sections could include haunch sections where you've got an increasing web depth. Another question here. How, how do you define or enter the data for shear stunts? Yeah, on one of the dialogues, I forget whether it's the material or the geometric section dialogue, there is a shear stud where you're specifying the number of shear studs that you want per linear meter of the girder. You're also setting the height of the shear stud and the diameter of the shear stud. And just one more to close this out. Um, can bolted connections be defined? Yes, in the one of the sub-dialogues, you can look at uh, bolted connections such as splice details within the girders. We're not going to cover that today, but that is part of the uh, composite designer. Okay, thank you, Paul, for the uh, the questions. We are monitoring them as they come through, so please keep them firing across to us. Okay, from this point, uh, what would happen? Well, you would pass that data across to LUSAS, and LUSAS, you then go into the environment you're more familiar with, of course. Uh, LUSAS will then calculate the forces and moments from the information you're passing across. And what we're going to make use of here, some of the nice features that are available in LUSAS, uh, you may have picked up in, in a version released recently that we now have this multi-function capability to have more than one analysis running inside a particular model. And we're going to use this for the different construction stages. And we're also going to use vehicle load optimization to create the live load patterns. So these are some of the features which you're probably already familiar with in LUSAS. And then when you've done that, you can obviously go forward and do things you're very familiar with, creating bending moment diagrams, and all this can be viewed inside the LUSAS program, as you're probably currently doing. Then there's a, a dedicated facility, which has been added to the bridge menu, to export the forces at the moment back into the steel composite designer. There's no cut and paste here. It is literally an export function, and Julian's going to pick that up to show you how we do this, and then it will be sucked back into the, uh, the composite deck designer. Thank you, Julian. Okay, so we've basically put the data into the Composite Designer and we've exported it from the Composite Designer. I can now use that as the basis of an analysis model. Now, currently in here, I have a blank analysis model. So under the Attributes tab here, there is no data. So the first thing I'm going to do is import the data from the Composite Designer. So if I go to File script, run script. The file that is created by the composite designer is a VBS file. And here I've got that VBS file. So if I just OK that, what I should get is a series of geometric sections, a series of material data, and the shrinkage and thermal effect as a loading here. Now, if I just talk about this a little bit more, here on the geometric sections, let's just consider girder A. And we've got the various uh, sections that are required for the stage construction analysis that we're going to look at. So if I click on this first one, what we've exported there are just the raw steel sections, and you can see that. So this would be used for the non-composite steel section analysis, whereas if I click on the last one here, you can see that this is the composite section that we would be looking at. So you basically have your geometric sections relating to the stage construction process that you would undertake in your analysis model. Now, what I would now do is use these sections and the materials to build an analysis model. Now, rather than just sit down and show you that today, because it's going to take a few minutes, I've already got one that's uh, recreated. So if I open up a model in the background, this is just a simple grillage model. I'm just going to say no to the results so I can talk about it a little bit first of all. These two lines here are not structural parts of the model. They are essentially just the limits of the carriageway loading that it is used for the traffic load optimization process that I actually use to create the Eurocode load pattern. So those are just the carriageway definitions. Apart from that, we basically have a simple grillage, longitudinal and transverse members. If I look at the analysis tab in the tree view, and if I scroll to the top of the analysis tab, what you'll see is we have multiple analyses. 
So here we've got the composite analysis. Down here we've got the non-composite analysis. So if I were looking at the properties here, these would just be the steel girders. There would be no transverse slab in this type of analysis. Whereas this one, we've got the composite sections and we're including the, the transverse slab for the grillage properties. Down here, we're looking at the traffic load optimization. Now, for this particular model, we've only done traffic load optimization on this span one in this area. But if you were doing a more complicated structure in more locations, you could have many other traffic load positions. Below that, we have a series of combinations and envelopes that have been created to combine the various analysis results. Now, I could look at these inside LUSAS. So if I were just to load up my results. Now, what we're looking at there is the bending moment on the grillage. Now, to make this a little bit easier to see, if I go to my group of main girders and keep that as only visible or set as only visible, I'm now just looking at the longitudinal bending moments on the four girder sections. And this is for a particular load case, in this case, one of the traffic vehicle loading cases here. Now, I could look at the combinations and the envelopes and look at the raw numbers. And I could use those raw numbers directly. But really, what I want to do is take these numbers that I'm seeing back on the screen here into the composite designer. Now, to do that, you don't have to cut and paste. We have a dedicated tool that allows you to do that. So if I go to the bridge menu under Composite Designer, Export, we have this dedicated sub dialog that shows me the combinations. And if I look at the selected sections in here, you'll see it's blank. But what I can do is load up one. So here, I'm going to go to Open, and I'm going to load up the data file. And what this will do is open up the data for the second girder section here. So essentially, I've created a series of design points along this second girder that I'm going to use for my analysis of the composite section. Now, because I pressed OK, it's actually exporting the data now. So it's basically looking at the LUSAS model and creating a file in the background, in this case, a, a, an Excel file that can be loaded back into the composite designer. Now, for this particular example, it's exporting all the points along Gerda 2. But it could just be selective points that you're exporting. And it would then just design for those selected points effectively. So that's done. It's created a, a file in the background that I'm now going to use in the third presentation shortly. But before I do that, I'm just going to hand back over to Stuart. OK, so what we've done here, uh, so far uh, in LUSAS, we've made use of the multiple analysis, the vehicle load optimization, the autoloader capability, the live loading, and we've done a, a, a visual check for the design effects. Uh, we've got some more questions coming in, so uh, Paul is, is available to ask those. He's monitoring them as we roll through the session. Uh, Paul, we've got a new question here. <laughs> I, can't keep, I can't keep up with all the questions. Um, is the deck designer included in version 15.1, or is it extra, and uh, is there a cost involved? Uh, it isn't included. It is an optional extra. Uh, please, at the end of the session, uh, we've got to have asked the question. I have got the name in front of me. Uh, your respective account managers will get back to you with those sort of information if that is of interest to you, but it is an optional extra. There's, there's so, so many questions. We'll just have to just choose a few. Um, uh, one question, is it possible to, to define a, a bottom flange that's built up of two plates rather than just a single girder that we're showing? Yeah, when I was talking about the thickness of the bottom flange, when I was saying that you could have a 40 mil plate, that plate could be made up of two plates or more. And we've got a, a checkbox to allow you to look at a reduced um, stress if it's made up of more plates or if it's just one big plate. So that can be covered. And it's covered quite nicely in the help system. 
Um, now the question then, uh, is, it, is it possible to build a box girder section rather than an eye girder? Uh, yes, it is. Um, the facility can be used for um, basic eye girders or it can be used for box girders. Um, any more? Do you want any more? I, I, think, I think time is against us. Unfortunately, uh, you should see Paul. We should have to be on video here. Paul's come in with lots of little post sticks stuck all over himself so with your questions. Uh, questions are good, but unfortunately, time will be against us. So, anyway, just moving forward here into the final stage. Uh, after the loose test part has gone through, uh, we'll start looking at various classification checks according to the code. We we'll also look at sort of things like plastic resistance, again, according to the relevant sections in the code. And here we start to get some graphical and data, tabular data back for you. It, it sort of also shows you things like the, uh, the efficiency of the section you we're showing there. We, we're looking at um, I think that's some shear study information we've got. And it's sort of a very good way of getting information back to you. Uh, after the analysis, uh, we're able to do things like ULS and SLS checks on the studs, again, according to the code, and again, some graphical information out of the online help showing you how we're calculating this information is shown here. Uh, we do elastic stressing, plastic shear resistance, shear buckling moments. Again, everything which I hope you probably are familiar with if you're doing these sort of uh, code checks as the particular references uh, allude to, and um, where breathing comes into it as does fatigue, all according to the relevant sections in the code. I think we had a question on this earlier. Yes, we can look at bolted connections, again, according to the code of practice. This particular product, it's, it's ongoing. We're, we're developing it all the time. So some of our clients already have this, may not have this facility yet, but it gets added and we develop it as we move forward. Then we get into the design check itself. We've got a summary of review here. And the sort of quick observation here, we're illustrating some nice uh, green numbers for pass, but then we've got some uh, not so nice uh, numbers in red. So this is where you have to start doing your assessment. Have we got pass or failure? And that can come back to you and help you understand the, the, the design you're working on here. Uh, a lot of this tabular information, we're giving you background. Where, do, where are the numbers coming from? How are we calculating numbers in the code? All this is in the help. So we're not just giving you a black box here, put some information in, give you some information back, pass, fail. We're actually showing you how we're calculating this information along the way, which makes it hopefully clearer for you to obviously check this. This is a computer program after all. We always uh, stress that you should check your results and verify them and before you go off and build whatever you're building. Right, uh, moving forward, then if you're happy with design, we can output the results in a word format, is typical, and this is some illustrations. We can include graphs in here, we can include tabular data in here, so all this will go into your report, and you pump this forward to your assessment people to check your design. Other things can go in here, we can have graphical design here showing some ULS on the stud utilization and we're also showing you the stresses in the top and bottom fiber of this particular example that Julian's working his way through. Okay, so this is sort of the final stage of Julian's portion. Uh, we're, we're just pushing up to the half an hour point but we should be able to uh, finish this hopefully not too long. Julian. Okay, so essentially what we've done is we, we've Enter the data into the composite designer. We've exported that out into LUSAS. We've got a LUSAS model. We've created combinations. And then we've exported those results out to use in the composite designer. Now, if I look in here, currently you can see that all the stage construction stages here are, are zero, effectively. There's no data in there. So the first thing I need to do is import, so file, import forces and moments, and I can import the uh, the results from the simple Grillage model that I created. So in here, that's the result, so if I open that. Now, it will take a few seconds to populate the, the dialogues here, but essentially what it's doing is for each of the construction stages and for each of the, the locations that I chose, the design locations, along GERDA 2, it's basically populating these tables. Now, if I just try and move these, it's still loading in. It'll take a few seconds. There's quite a, quite a bit of data that's coming in. Okay, so that's been loaded now. Now, if I just look at the force and moment uh, table, 
So here you can see that for each of the design locations, these are the design locations, I now have some design data here for the various construction stages that I'm working with. So once you've got that design data in, I can go to the window menu, and I tend to look at the summary of the results to start with. So the summary of the results here is basically allowing me to see by green which checks have passed and which sections have passed, and by red which sections have failed, so I need to look at them in more detail. Now I know I've looked at these uh, calculations before. The ULS calculations are fine, so everything's green in there. But if I were to look at the fatigue calculations, you'll see there's some red numbers. So here, at a number of the locations, we've exceeded the utilization. Now, one of the things to just bear in mind, if I click on to one of these rows here, it will orientate them so I see the passes and fails at the top of those sections so that I can quickly identify which sections and which locations are failing so that I can go back and make some changes. Now in reality, once I've identified which locations have got problems and which checks have got problems, I could go back and tweak the design data and then I could do an iterative loop through LUSAS. Now, if I did that iterative loop through LUSAS, what I would do is export the section properties again from the composite designer, but this time I would load them on top of the existing LUSAS model. And all that would do is update the geometric sections. I don't need to then rebuild any of the combinations or load cases. I would just have to resolve the analysis model and then just re-export the results. So any of the loops in the iterization of design sections is actually very efficient to do. Now, I'm not going to do that today, but that's the process you would do. So once you've looked at your summary table, I would tend to look at my detailed results. So in here, I can basically choose a section that I'm interested in looking at, and I could look at a combination in terms of what results I want to look at. In here, I can then choose a particular design check. So here, I'm looking at sort of um, a interaction check, and I can see how that is performing. I can look at any of the detailed checks themselves here to understand exactly what's going on. Now, obviously, this is for a section and a particular low case. I could then look at those and understand which one's failing and which one's passing. Now, as well as looking at a section for a given check, under utilities, I can look at graphs and I could look at how the effect is varying along a girder. So under graphs here, I can choose any particular graph. So here I'm looking at stud utilization. Now again, these graphs perhaps look a little bit skewed, but remember I'm only putting the live load onto span one, so that's why you've got higher utilizations on this span than you have on this span. So it's only um, the live load on, on span one effectively. But this is a nice way of looking at some of the design checks. So rather than looking at that, I could look at, say, bottom flange stresses. Uh, that one. And again, I can look at the different stresses along the bottom flange. The jumps are where you get the different sections coming into play. So this is quite a nice way of visualizing those. Now, as well as looking at things graphically, if I go to my Windows tab again here, I can produce a report on any of the sections. Now, these are obviously all the sections, and I could choose to do all the checks on one section, or I could do all sections with one check. Now, obviously, if I ticked everything in here, it's going to create a massive Word document, so you probably wouldn't do everything, but you can select these rows and produce a, a rich text format document that Stuart talked about earlier that would cover the sections, basically. And I've actually got one of those open in the background, so I could probably go and find that in terms of what we're looking at. 
So in Modeler here, in Webinars, we've got a document that I created earlier today. And this is the output that shows you the design checks that we're doing and the numbers that are coming from those design checks. Now, this obviously can come out in a, in a sort of rich text Word document, but it can also be included in terms of uh, design reports that you create with inside LUSACs. Now, what we've tried to do today is not run through everything in terms of a training course. That would take hours to go through this um, facility. But what we've tried to do is introduce the concepts that you work with using the designer. Now, I'm just looking back at the example here. So this example takes you through the process of building the data inside the composite designer. It takes you through the process of building the grillage, and it's, it, it describes why you've got grillage bays of a certain size. So in here, it takes you into LUSAS and actually physically builds the model. Once you've built the model, it takes you through the process of setting up all the multiple analyses and the stage construction. And then at the bottom here, it goes into the reporting side and also looking at the various text reports that come from this. So the utilization effects that we're looking at. So really, if you're looking to look and understand how this composite designer works in detail, detail, I would highly recommend you look at these examples as the starting process of understanding how the composite designer fits with LUSAS and how you work with the flow of data. Now at that point, I'm gonna hand you back to Stuart. Okay, well, let's really come to the end of the, the technical part. That's sort of what we've done is run through a summary here. There's a whole bunch of checking going on, as you've seen. And judging by the questions we've had, I think this is an area of great interest to you all because some of the questions are very detailed about various sections of the code. Uh, I think we've probably got a couple more questions we could be quickly fit in. We appreciate we've overrun the allotted time, but Paul, got a couple uh, of quick just, final we'll, questions. We'll, we'll try and do it. We'll answer all the questions afterwards that we don't answer now. Uh, some of the simpler ones. How do you decide your design locations in the designer before the analysis is carried out? You can choose to create a section that is um, over a, a length of the girder. Now, typically that will be based on, on where, your, where your steel sections are, are going to be looked at. But actually you can choose any of the nodes um, along that girder before or after the analysis and update the, the report. So really I'm, I'm tending to enter the, the sections where the, the physical girder changes, but you can actually then split that up later on if you want to. One more. Um, are the bending moments for the, for the composite sections or the steel sections only? It's looking at the full build-up of the composite stresses. So you're not looking at bending moments for just the steel sections. If you look at the composite sections, you'll be getting the full composite bending moments. Those are then being brought together. So the composite and the non-composite bending moments are being brought together in the steel, the composite designer to give you the correct build up of stresses for the design to be undertaken. And just to close off, will the webinar be available to view on, offline later? And the answer is obviously yes. We'll, we'll post it onto our website and advise you with the link. OK, well, thank you, Paul, and thank you, Julian, for the, the technical sessions there. Uh, all of this, I think, as you hopefully have understood, is quite comprehensive. And hopefully, uh, from the questions I say, I think a number of you could find a great deal of benefit in working with a tool like this one. Uh, obviously, a lot of online information is available. There's some online reference guide that comes with the design code capabilities. The worked examples you probably would have, well, you may have already found in 15 naught, but they are available in our, uh, our examples. And we've just finished a second one, uh, the Composite Highway Bridge Design example. That will be released with 15.2. Uh, I presume we could possibly let that one go sooner if somebody sort of said, I need it tomorrow. But it will come out with 15.2, which we're hoping to get out soon. Uh, it has been used. It's been used in the real world. Uh, Sperry there has uh, used this particular piece of software on this bridge in Italy. For more information on the uh, Lucas Steel and Composite Designer, uh, please go to uh, 
please contact us, not go anywhere, actually send us an email, send it to info at lucas.com. We do have a lot of questions which we will endeavor to get back to you on. Uh, we will get your questions to your respective account managers and uh, if you know who that is, just tell us and we'll make our life quicker. Otherwise, we will find him for you and get back to you accordingly with your questions and answers. Uh, when you come to sign off, you will actually get a questionnaire, which we appreciate some time, and part of the questionnaire will be about future webinars. Here is a list of the ones which we, we con uh, not, we've been asked for in the past, some of the ones we would like to do. I'm very keen on the third one down about scripting and customization of LUSAS, because there's a lot of capability in LUSAS, but ooh, sometimes it might take too long, it's taking three or four clicks. You can customize it. You can change the whole look and feel of the whole program. So we might give you a, a webinar on how you do this. But obviously, more, uh, more appropriate ones, how you do bridge assessments, soil structure interaction. Remember, LUSAS offers you not just a structure analysis program, but also soil and structure interaction. And for the, uh, the gurus, so, so connection and finite element selection. At the end of the day, we are a finite element program, and a lot of these nice um, graphical user interface sort of takes away some of that sort of skill, if you like, but you've still got to understand your element selection, why you're using it, is it appropriate for particular applications, and how do finite elements work? So we might put together a, a future webinar on that. But please fill in the questionnaire at the end of the day and get that back to us, and we will see how we go forward. Send questions in, and we will reply to them as soon as possible. We've actually been inundated with questions, which is fantastic. So it may be a little time before you get an answer, but we will get back to you all. If you don't hear from us, you know what to do. We have a telephone. Basically, thank you for your time. Uh, we hope you found this has been very interesting. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Paul. If you've got any more questions, keep them going. This session will continue to run for another five minutes or so. But as I say, fire your emails in. And uh, that's it from the LUSAS guys. And we'll be in touch. Take care. Thank you for your time.